Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of the Merlin Cast. That's the Merlin the Mighty podcast where I just kind of get on here and discuss, uh, you know, geek pop culture news and uh, some other discussions about some other things that I like from time to time. I'm going to be doing a solo podcast today. Just kind of felt like doing one. I felt like I hadn't had a whole lot of time to catch up on a lot of things, so there wasn't that much for me to really talk about. But over the past couple weeks and months, I've been slowly checking out a couple different things, so... I thought I'd share some thoughts with you guys. And, uh, well, the first thing's actually a little bit of news that I just found out about. It's about Henry Cavill. Uh, I, I pronounced it Henry Cavill, which I guess is completely wrong, but, you know, I've been mispronouncing Superman's name for years, and, oh, well, he probably doesn't mind. Uh, but he does mind, I guess, that he wasn't getting paid enough or something. It's very similar to the Chris Pine with the Abram Star Trek movies. Uh, he might be possibly out as Superman, might be quitting the DC Expanded Universe or Worlds of DC or whatever they're calling the movies now. Um, you know, which is, it's kind of one of those things that I, I feel like it sucks. The last couple podcasts I've done on here, I feel like all I've really done is just complain about the state of DC movies. It's like, that's all I've been talking about lately. And it kind of sucks because it's a, it's a drag. And I feel like I've said the same thing over and over again for years now. I'm kind of tired of making the, the same points, but at the same time, I think fans are kind of excited for these movies. I mean, we've got Aquaman, we've got Shazam, we've got Wonder Woman 2, I think Suicide Squad's still getting a sequel. So there's all these movies that are in production, possibly, but the state of the entire franchise just seems like it's, I don't know if it's in jeopardy, but it, it's very chaotic, and it's, I don't know, I, I guess people are still interested in the individual movies. I mean, as a DC fan, you guys know, um... I've been a bit fatigued about it because it's been a lot of disappointment. It's been frustrating. Uh, but I think that if Henry Cavill does leave, or even the fact that he's like threatening to leave, just kind of speaks volumes to the situation. Like He's more interested in doing The Witcher show, which is pretty cool. I know that some of my friends are really excited about that. And I also really liked him in the recent Mission Impossible. I don't think I talked about it on any of the channels, but uh, the newest Mission Impossible was really good. And he was kind of an antagonist. I won't go into too many spoilers, but he was really good as an opposition to Tom Cruise. Like, I I really liked him, uh, definitely. I think that might be my favorite Mission Impossible, just because it, like, didn't take itself too seriously, uh, but at the same time, it was fully uh, fully committed to what it was. Just a lot of great stunt work, a lot of good action. It was fun. It was a good old-school spy movie. I really liked it. Uh, but, yeah, the state of DC movies is really questionable. I mean, some people are suggesting they could just, you know, recast Superman because DC has all the alternate universes that we know about. Uh, so, you know, there's that. Um, <laughs> I know people are really excited about the new Spider-Man game. I haven't played it yet, but I've heard it's really good. I might be picking that up soon if I, you know, have a little spare cash. But if not, I'll get to it eventually. But I know that's been really awesome. Uh, and I'll actually be getting to some other Spider-Man-related news a little bit down the line here. Uh, though, as far as comics go, I went back and started to read some old uh, Marvel stuff. And my friend Troll let me borrow uh, the Dark Knight Metal storyline uh, some trades i've been looking through that just a bunch of <laughs> evil batman from different universes coming together and they kind of have to fight them all one guy gets the flash's power another one gets the green lantern's power i mean it's the kind of stuff that's been explored in elseworld storylines before uh but just kind of emphasized more around evil batman haven't finished it yet kind of been going through some of it very slowly uh but i like it i, I think it's pretty fun once again kind of a simple storyline but I think as far as crossovers go, I've seen much dumber things. I mean, Batman being a villain is kind of one of the scariest things ever. We've discussed that many times on the channel with my friends, so you guys kind of know that. But, yeah, evil Batman would be a threat no matter what. Though I still think Owlman is my favorite from the uh, the Christ on Infinite Earths movie. Uh, there was the Superman Doomsday movie, which I guess they remade, another animated one, which I think that was the first one that, that Warner Brothers made uh, with the DC animated movies. Which I didn't think was very good when it first came out. I thought it was one of the weaker ones, but I guess they decided to redo it, and uh, I, I don't know. Uh, they decided to redo it, and I I heard it was okay. Um, I'm more excited for the sequel though, which kind of follows up on the death of Superman with the various other uh, Superman that try to kind of take on the the model, try to take his place and stand in for him because they think he's dead, and there's it's the the war of the Superman kind of thing. Uh, but I don't know how close they'll stick to the comics, but I always really liked that story, because I remember I read, uh, I never actually read the 
the uh, this multiple Superman storyline directly after death of Superman. Uh, but I did read the novelization, so I actually got even more detail. So I did like that storyline quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, moving on here, just on some shows that I've been catching up on. Um, Netflix uh, and Hulu is kind of my main source of entertainment these days uh, because movie season is going to be pretty slow for a while, though. We will probably be getting a Predator review on the channel soon. And I know next month I'll be seeing Venom and maybe the new Halloween, even though I don't know if I really want to see Venom. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, so I've been watching, uh, I think it's uh, I've been watching the it's one, it's one Stephen King show. I know there's a lot of Stephen King stuff going on. Uh, I've also been, I also checked out Disenchanted, which is from Matt Groening. Uh, that's the you know the creator of Simpsons Futurama. He did like a fantasy uh, sort of uh, parody satire, and you know it was only ten episodes. Uh, and I I didn't know how to feel about it at first. I think it's gotten like a lot of I don't know if it's backlash, but it's kind of mixed reception. Uh, but I think it's still gonna get a second season. Like people were interested enough that I guess they said okay, well we'll make another one. But then again, you know, Netflix it's hard to kind of determine that stuff with streaming services. They don't make that stuff public, but clearly, if something like Bright, which, you know, I didn't think was that great, could, you know, obviously get a sequel, even though it was kind of hated by a lot of people, I guess, you know, something like Disenchanted deserves a second season. Um, I, I want to, I hesitate to say that if you like Simpsons and Futurama, you'll definitely like it. I mean, I think if you're a big enough fan of that style of artwork and that style of writing and comedy, you should like it a little bit, because it's, it's very similar, like it, Futurama's kind of parodying Star Trek and a lot of sci-fi tropes, and, you know, Disenchanted is really just parodying, well, you know, the, uh, wait a minute. It, it's, it's, it's parodying fantasy, essentially. Um, and I, I'm actually going to check something here, because I, I think I keep mispronouncing this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it up now. This will show how, how uh, prepared I was for this. Okay, I didn't. I keep, I kept, yeah, okay, yeah, I've been mispronouncing it the whole time, miss saying it. It's Disenchantment. I keep saying disenchanted. I don't know why. I've been see, but anyway, yes, I'm gonna even put that here in my thing. Disenchantment. Wait, yes, no, no. Ah, professional podcast people. Professional podcast. Uh, but yeah, yeah, disenchantment. Uh, just to give you an idea, it's. I I think that the humor is very very dry. Uh. Like, I know that, you know how the, a lot of times in Simpsons and Futurama, there would be a lot of those little quick jokes in the background, like there might be something which is kind of like a parody of an actual company. You know, a lot of wordplay, a lot of puns. Uh, my friend Dan really likes that stuff. Like, there's always that stuff that's kind of in the background of like a Simpsons thing. It's like a second or two gag. You might blink and miss it. There's a lot more of those in this, and I feel like that the show relies very heavily on that uh, in the background, like the the humor is not always at the forefront. Like it's um, it it doesn't have quite as much pop. Like the the characters are not so bombastic that they take up the whole the whole screen. But the the thing is, that sounds like a negative. Like it definitely is not exactly trying to copy the other shows, which I do kind of respect. Uh, it's not a clone copy. So in a way, if you want the exact same thing, you're not going to get it. But I think that the characters are actually pretty interesting. You know, I, I like the princess. I like her little demon. I like the the elf elfo. They're all they're all likable characters, and a lot. I think a lot of the same voice talents return. Uh, but the thing that's interesting about the plot and uh, interesting about the show in general is that, unlike Futurama and definitely unlike The Simpsons, which were heavily episodic in their stories. Disenchantment has kind of a long-running storyline uh, that's sprinkled out throughout the season, and it's a bit more serious. Like, I know that, you know, like, obviously Simpsons and Futurama had serious moments, like, and any comedy can, of course. You want, we want to have those moments of gravity so you care about the characters, kind of like with drama you need levity. But it, I feel like this one is definitely the most serious of the comedies. Like, and the there is, like, a plot, there's a mystery... And it kind of ends on a cliffhanger that's actually kind of dark uh, at the end of the season. So, I mean, I'm really curious to see where it goes. Like, I like it. I, I can't honestly say that I think it's as funny as Simpsons or Futurama, but it's different enough that I'm intrigued. Like, uh, it's a different type of project uh, that I do find a lot of interest in. So I did like it. Uh, I think you should check it out if you do like that stuff. 
Um, but in all honesty, if you don't like it in the first episode, give it a couple. I mean, it's only ten, so you know they're fair, they're a little bit longer than the uh, the twenty minute episodes usually on TV. So that's kind of cool. Uh, it's it's not a massive commitment, but I'd give it a shot. Uh, but I, I'm interested in the second season. Uh, I also it took me a while. I got caught up on Luke Cage season two, uh, which I thought was uh, just in summation. I thought was not as good as the first season. I seem to I feel like every single Netflix Marvel show, the second season is just never as good as the first. It just never is. And I mean, that's not to say I thought Luke Cage season two was bad. Uh, I liked I liked some things. I thought the the weird thing with Mariah I, and she, man. They go down some dark places with her, but it doesn't really make her any more likable. I, I, I feel like Luke Cage and a lot of these shows, when they get to the second season, Iron Fist had this first big problem with multiple villains shifting around. With Luke Cage season one, it didn't bother me quite as much, but like it, it had that finale, which kind of didn't have as much punch either, because Diamondback just wasn't as good a villain as Cottonmouth, and I don't think they've had a villain as good as Cottonmouth. Bushmaster was good. He was good, but like I kind of felt like there was some sympathy for him, and then the thing just kind of gets resolved. He just leaves, you know, which which bothered me. And then Luke inherits the club, and he's kind of like possibly gonna get suckered in, drawn into the the temptation of evil, and be the villain. Like, what are they doing? I mean, I don't know. I I don't really know if I like where it's going. It's weird. It's was not the most satisfying ending. Though I did think that Iron Fist was more bearable in Luke Cage, because I did not like season one. I thought, I thought Iron Fist season one was just like a whole level of just bad. It was just so bad. It was, it was unbelievable. Like, I think that overall that the quality of the seasons, of the shows up to that point had been really good, and they had been very grounded in realism. They took themselves seriously, but they weren't overly corny. Like they, I think they tried to be about as serious and as believable with superhero stuff as you could be, which some people might not, like, be into, but I really thought Daredevil was a great drama and legal... a great legal drama and crime drama and mystery before it was a superhero show, which, like, the superhero stuff was cool, but it's like, if he didn't wear the costume, you know, and didn't do quite as much vigilante stuff, it still would have been a good show. Like, you could have almost taken a lot of that stuff out of it, and it still would have been good, and that's amazing and like i said it might be kind of weird like okay we're removing the superhero elements from the superhero show but my point is the writing is so good that i like those characters you know even without that like i, I mean i still have some action of course but it was just really good stuff and with iron fist it was just so cheesy it was like a like a b movie production the directing was really weird uh, the writing wasn't great for the character the acting was was bad the, the dialogue was terrible i mean uh, it, it was just, it was really weird. Uh, but his appearance, like, even after Defenders, it kind of annoyed me, but I liked him in in the Luke Cage season 2. I liked their their episode together. Though, once again, he kind of just disappeared. So I know Iron Fist season 2 is out now. People seem to like it. I, I'm probably not going to dive into it. Like, maybe, maybe I'll give it another shot, but I don't, I just don't have that much interest in the character. The The first season really didn't do any favors for intriguing me but iron fist has his fans maybe though i've heard they've done right and they've improved upon the first season so that's good though i am really really excited for daredevil season three like i'm just like oh when i found out we had to get iron fist season two before daredevil i'm like oh man but i want to watch the uh, first two seasons again because i really really liked the netflix show i think i mean you guys might know this but daredevil is easily uh, one of my favorite superheroes. I wouldn't say he's like quite up there with. He's not quite at like Spider-Man or Batman level, uh, or even maybe some of the X-Men. But like, I really, really like Daredevil a lot, uh, and I really, I even enjoy the Ben Affleck movie. I, I like it. I, I know it's it's kind of cheesy. It's it's not it's not a great movie, but I I feel like it's it's kind of fun. It's very nostalgic for me. And I, and I still liked... That was my major introduction of the character outside of, like, an appearance in the Spider-Man animated series. And I really liked it. I thought Ben Affleck did a good job. Even though he might not be Batman in the movies anymore. I mean, that's a whole mess. But, uh, yeah. But I'm really excited for Daredevil Season 3. I think it... I really think that Daredevil is probably the best stuff that Marvel has put out. In terms of just pure writing. 
I, I mean, I guess the movies are obviously really popular. It's a different animal. Hard to compare. Like, I love the Marvel movies for the most part. But I like the fact that the Daredevil uh, shows, the Netflix shows, they, they're taking more risks, and they're, they're trying to push the envelope a little more. And I really like that. It's, it's my style of storytelling uh, that I really can absorb. I really like that stuff, and it speaks to me, I guess. But Daredevil Season 3 hype is real. Um, also kind of on the Netflix uh, banner here, uh, Lady and I have been watching Glow. And, you know, talk about judging something by the cover, because if I, looking at Glow at a glance, it just, it just looked like a, you know, an, a show about 80s women's wrestling. Uh, and you have to understand something about me, like, just everything, it looked like a show that was, you know, more of a, a girl show. Uh, it looked like, you know, more of kind of a light comedy uh, very heavily 80s based uh, and it's about wrestling uh, I am not really I'm not like a huge like comedy person anyway and I, and I don't I don't typically care about wrestling but I I just as a prelude to this here this section I have to say that I have I for a long time growing up I mean I know a lot of people like uh, I know Walking Double O Dead you know he likes wrestling and uh, my one friend Troll, he grew up with wrestling, and I know people, people in my life, people I've met, talked to, like, you, there's quite a few people around here that like professional wrestling, and it is, it is a big form of entertainment, and it has been pretty prevalent, I know it's had ups and downs recently, you know, maybe it's not the glory days of it anymore or whatever, but the point is, it's, it's one of those little fan bases that I've always been out of, and it's interesting because even though I am part of some fandoms, and I try to be pretty open-minded and not judging of other people's, uh, like, wrestling was kind of like, uh, like, you know, a lot of people really get into following certain teams and sports events and, and stuff like that. I was never very athletic. I never got super invested. Like, I could see myself going to, like, a some kind of event, like a baseball game or whatever. It's a, uh, you know, but I never followed it hardcore like some people do. But everybody has their thing. And I guess it was kind of akin to, like, that or going to some other kind of show. The point is, I never really got into it. I thought wrestling offhand seemed kind of dumb seemed kind of uh, childish, and I was like, it's fake, it's not even real wrestling, it's not like boxing or like professional, like actual wrestling, MMA or Ultimate Fight or whatever, like, I thought people would be more into that, but, uh, I like, looking into it, I didn't realize that wrestling is, it's a form of theater, it's a form of performance art, it's, there's characters, there's uh, recurring themes, there's storylines uh, that are kind of like melded with reality, and I think there was a really good video by a Super Eye Patch Wolf, he talked about why he loved wrestling. He went really in-depth into it. And I'm like, wow, well, you've sold me. Okay, you've sold me. You made me kind of respect wrestling. And I'm like, I didn't think that could happen. But Glow, I think, is a really, really interesting because it's another way to kind of show the appreciation for wrestling. But the thing is, not only is it just kind of a comedy, it's also, it's just really good. It's because it's very believable, and the comedy is not. I, I, I'd say it's more like a. It's a drama comedy, a dramedy. It's, it's, and it's very, very realistic. I think it's done by the same people that did Orange Is the New Black, which I didn't know. And it just, it like there's, it's actually pretty serious. Like there's, there's serious issues they face about. Uh, I mean, like they obviously, they try the struggles of uh, trying to create a new show on a network, and the struggles that actresses had to go through at the time, and now dealing with sexism, and there's issues with race, and, uh, like, uh, there's, there's parental issues, there's drama, there's, like, I mean, I just, like, it, but it's, it's so, it's just so well done, the actors just are so believable in the roles, like, it seems like, it's based on something that actually did happen, so, I mean, I'm guessing they're taking a lot of notes, but I really liked Glow a lot, I'm going through season two now, it's really good, like, it's, it's really good, I'm really enjoying it, uh, it's really fascinating, uh, also, was watching the the Troy a Netflix show, which uh, which is obviously based on the the Troy battle the, from mythology. And I have to say uh, about that, I, I still like the Brad Pitt movie. I know it, some people might think it's bad, whatever. I I mean, but the thing I like about Troy is, I guess technically it's better because it's trying to be more realistic. But the weird thing about that show is that even though it's even though it's more grounded in reality it seems a little more believable there actually are gods involved in it there there is closer there's well not it's not like super involved but they're in the background manipulating things kind of like it was mentioned in the original poem and they're really weird interpretations of the gods too like zeus is like really creepy it's really creepy 
I don't know. It's different. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like Vikings, though it's not as good as Vikings, not at all. Uh, but it's it's interesting. Um, uh, I know how it's going to end, so I haven't like really been rushing for us to finish watching it. But it's not bad. Uh, but getting back, uh, one new show uh, that I really well, I'm a little behind on it, I guess. But uh, I had been re- resistant to Ultimate Spider-Man because uh, I really liked Spectacular Spider-Man, and Ultimate Spider-Man seemed too meta, too silly, kind of annoying. Uh, you know, the editing was too rapid, like it was designed purely for kids with ADD. You know, whatever. Uh, but I've been checking out Marvel Spider-Man, and I've been, I watched like the uh, beginning of the first couple episodes, and I really, really like that show. It reminds me a lot of Spectacular Spider-Man, but everybody's brainier. A lot of the characters are kind of like situated around different high schools, so. That means that uh, the Osbournes are, like, <laughs> starting a school, and Harry's kind of a genius. And, like, I mean, there's little things like that, like Gwen's there, and she, like, everybody's, like, super smart. And they're trying to kind of fit in more in to kind of relate to the, the Marvel movies. Uh, so I don't know if it, it's, like, pseudo-canon. I don't think it's, like, true canon. Uh, but, yeah, I, I really have been liking that a lot. It, it reminds me of Spectacular Spider-Man, but a little bit more updated. Like, they've got Miles Morales in there. They've got, uh, I think, some other newer villains. Like, it's melding different elements of everything, but it's still keeping true to the, the main storylines. You know, like the, the key pieces are there, which whenever you're adapting a storyline based on something else, I think you should try to keep those true components intact. Uh, but, yeah, Marvel Spider-Man's been really good so far. I've been really enjoying that. Animation's a little weird. I think it might... It's very similar to uh, the Avatar, where it's, like, kind of anime-influenced, but not, not super not super influenced, but it's definitely there. Uh, speaking of anime, uh, uh, transition, uh, I'm still behind on a lot of shows, but I did get a chance to kind of like uh, check out a couple other ones uh, some friends introduced me to that have been, uh, one or two that I've requested for a while. Um, I'm I'm still a bit behind on, on Boku no Hero Academia, though I'm, I, I decided to sit down and try to get through a little bit of the second season. I'm still at the point where they're doing the race um, uh, with the, get the headbands, uh, and I'm just kind of remembered of remembering a lot of the, the things like the Hunter exam or the Tune exam. Like it's just, uh, it's definitely just following a lot of those similar shonen fighting anime beats. And like I, I want to stress that I think that it's a very good show. Like I can understand, I can understand the hype. It's a good show, but at the same time, I've seen it before. Like and and maybe that's why I've been a little bit uh, kind kind of slow on getting involved with the hype, because I did watch the first season and started the second. I think the third's out now, uh, and I and I was curious about it, and I have a lot of friends that like it. I think it's good, but when you've been watching anime, and you've watched quite a bit of shonen, and you've look, spent a lot of time looking at the different structures, and you, you get used to how anime is, you know, the jokes about how a lot of times they fit into similar categories, all the same beats are met, uh... <laughs> It, it, you kind of see that it really is just another shonen action fighting anime with different skin. And I know I used to just praise Hunter x Hunter because it did the similar thing. I think Hunter x Hunter, you know, it had the the quirkiness, uh, the the quirks in this case would have been obviously their their none abilities. Uh, but in every show like that, there's always going to be that one distinct thing that the world is based around how it works. And uh, I think it's good. I think. That capturing into the superhero mentality, like I've talked about before, definitely makes sense. Um, I think that the thing that, from what I've seen so far, that really sells the show is the fact that you've got a character who is unsure of himself, who really needs to work for his power. Which, uh, Tiefling, uh, in one of our conversations, mentioned that that's one reason he really liked the show. Because that's different. You don't have that hero that automatically has the power and they're good at everything right away, which is a problem that a lot of those shows have run into. Now, on the flip side, though, he does complain quite a bit. Like, he has all these victories, and yet he's still, he still is constantly concerned. Like, oh, no, what if I fail next time? Now, while narratively speaking, I think that can be a little annoying, I also can understand why it's relatable. Being somebody myself who does deal with issues of anxiety and depression and has to work on his self-confidence a lot... And, ha- and I know people that do in life, if, if that's something that kids and young people and anybody watching can relate to, to make, uh, to make Adoria a more relatable character, that's fine. Uh, so I think 
that's definitely a positive attribute. But it could also be a little annoying uh, at the same time. And, and like I said, it's also the fact that I'm slowly going through it because I feel like even though the world is really cool and there's a lot of really interesting characters. Like I like the fact that the side characters, they kind of are, are fairly equal. Like it's not like he, he takes up all the time and all the space. You know, all the characters have some time in the limelight. So that's one cool thing. I'm curious to see if we get to see more of those villains come back. So slowly making my way through Boku no Hero. Uh, try, trying to get through it. Um, and I might got to probably have some time, not n this next week, but in the following. So maybe I'll I'll try and catch up a bit more. I want to, I'm going to take a little, little time off. So maybe I can plow through some anime. But uh, speaking of shows that I... Slowly, I'm getting through Dragon Ball Super. Uh, I've been watching the dub of the the Goku Black arc, and uh, I really do like it. It's probably the best arc of Super I've seen so far. I mean, in comparison to a lot of the stuff with the two tournament arcs and Frieza coming back, which it was more interesting. But then I kind of realized that Goku Black is just kind of redoing the Trunks Cell, you know, Android timeline thing again. Uh, it, it, essentially, it's it's another one of those things. Uh, but one thing. And maybe that's one reason why I like it, but I also think that it, it does add to the lore a bit. And I, I think that Zamasu is a really interesting villain as well. So uh, I'm going through it. I like it. But once again, I'm like, this is good, but they're just kind of redoing stuff we've already seen before. And it's not quite as good, you know, like they are fleshing some things out, which I like. But I, I since I also know a lot about the stuff that happens in the next tournament, I'm like, I, I'm interested in the Broly movie, kind of. I'm probably I'm gonna see that, but I'm I'm not like, uh, it's once again it's just the same old beats for fan service. So, eh, you know I'm kind of lukewarm about Dragon Ball Super. Like I'm watching it when I when I feel like it. Uh, I did check out Assassination Classroom finally. My friend Nick uh, showed that to me the other day, like a while back, and uh, I really liked it. I thought that was a really unique setup. This teacher wants to teach a bunch of kids, and they have to try to find a way to kill him because for some reason he's this weird mutant superpowered being that may or may not destroy the planet. So I only watched a couple episodes, but I I am curious to see where it goes. Even though there is a there's like a moral each episode, it's it definitely has its own formula too. But I was curious about it. Very unique as well. And uh, Troll showed me Chivalry of a Failed Knight, which is like uh, this. They're, they're of course they're magical knights in this realm, and they're going to a school, and they have to fight to see who'll be the best protector of the realm kind of thing if it's in modern times you know very similar setup and it's kind of like this harem romance sort of thing at least it seemed like it was going to be that way and i was like why are you showing me this it doesn't really seem like my kind of thing but in this one apparently the two leads actually hook up fairly early and they stay together and they have like a real supportive relationship which in an anime like that you almost never see so that even though it kind of tricks you into thinking it's just going to be overrun by all that fan service and stuff is a bit different so that one kind of surprised me it's still not necessarily my thing but i did appreciate that they were trying to subvert some things you know you can subvert expectations in more clever ways than uh you know maybe in some star wars films oh uh, look what i did there <laughs> all right everybody well i'm trying to keep this brief um i just kind of want to get all that stuff out there might be more podcasts well there definitely will be more podcasts in the future um schedule still kind of you know off and on, you know, looking for work and uh, side jobs and everything and just being busy all the time, uh, you know, as you guys know. But I appreciate you all for being subscribed. Still working on trying to make some new videos. I've got a new channel, Drinkable Alchemy, where my friend Gimli and I review beers and talk about stuff, so you can check that out. Feel free to check out the fan group and some of the guys on there. And, uh, yeah, be getting some more anime-related videos to you guys and also some other movie reviews and stuff uh, that I want to get to, so... Plenty of good things coming up soon. Uh, feel free to subscribe, share, like the video, and let me know some topics for things you'd like to talk about. All right, everybody. Stay magical.